My friends, so you know me, I am not going to sugarcoat things. That's not what I'm here to do for you guys. And this was a rough week. I've been having pretty good sales in 2024, but this one was a little bit of a letdown. And I'll be honest with you as I go, but stick around to the end of the video because I gave myself a little bit of perspective and it brightened my mood just a little bit. So welcome back to my guest room slash my shoe storage. If you are new to the channel, my name is Maria and I am a part-time reseller that mostly sells on Poshmark and eBay. A little bit of Kid is in and Depop. I'm, I've, I've invested like no time into it. So I'm kind of giving up on that. Sorry for all the Depop fans out there. But today, once again, I'm going to go through all of my sales with you for this week. This is the week of March 10th through the 16th. Um, it is now Tuesday and this week ended Saturday for me. Things are kind of steady. They're not really worse. They might be a little bit better. I'm going to just see how it goes along the way. I will say that um, prior to this week, I had a couple weeks where I wasn't listing as much. I wasn't being as consistent. I had a lot of family things going on. My son turned to things that just as a part-time reseller, the rest of my life was more important and that was okay. So I was expecting my sales to slump. That is probably what I'm seeing. So right now I'm just focusing a lot of energy and getting things listed. I have a lot of stuff in my death pile to list. I had an opportunity to go to a really amazing thrift store sale today, but guys, I didn't. I stayed home. I listed. I'm going to film a video. I'm going to get back to listing. And I'm proud of myself. I have a really hard time staying away from good sales. Anyway, anyway. Okay. If you're proud of me, give me a thumbs up. I think I deserve it today. So let's start going through each and every one of my sales from last week. A couple things to remember when I say the profit for each item, that includes everything. It includes anything that might've been promoted on Poshmark or eBay. It includes shipping. It includes platform fees. It includes cost of goods. It includes everything except my taxes that I take out at the end of the year. So let's dive right into Sunday the 10th. I typically run a 30% off sale on Poshmark, which basically means I just send offers to likers with 30% off plus discounted shipping. So I did have some items sell as a result of that sale, which is always just a great way to kind of boost my sales for the week. So the first thing to sell were these Vans Kerrigan plaid, black, white, low top, slip on shoes, black gum sole, women's six. These were a little bit unique for me just because Vans usually have the like, um, like beige brown color gum sole and these were black which I thought was cool. They were also in really great condition when I picked them up. These sold as part of that 30% off sale for $28. I got them at a Goodwill retail store. My average cost of goods was $6.25. It's the other thing I forgot to mention. I do average my cost of goods for my thrift store hauls. So sometimes I might've paid a little bit more. These were probably around $8 on my Goodwill. And sometimes I'll pay a little bit less, but average cost of goods is what we're gonna go with. So you're gonna hear me say that about a hundred times during this video. And I apologize in advance. Don't make it a drinking game you won't make it very far. These were listed for 90 days and I made $14.13. Next was so cute. I was so excited to see this sell going into spring and it was this Oshkosh vintage blue jeans overalls, short short alls, classic vest back girls 6 X. I love selling Oshkosh. I grew up kind of with Oshkosh. I've actually been to Oshkosh, Wisconsin um, a, a long time ago, I had a cross country meet up there when I was in college. And then I kind of saw the, the local surroundings a little bit when I had a bit of time, but remember to keep an eye out for the vintage ones. You can usually tell by the paper tag. Um, it'll often have a union tag. Those are really great ones. And if you find the really kind of crazy prints, those can do really, really, really well. This was a basic one. It was also kind of an, an older size, you know, six year olds sometimes are willing to wear these types of things. My seven year old sometimes will wear like the cutesy kid things. And then other times is like, mom, I'm too old for that. So six is pushing it. If you find like the toddler ones, those ones are going to do a lot better, but this still sold for $31. I got this at a Goodwill retail. I do remember this being $3 cause it was marked as a kid's item, but my average cost of goods was $5 and 68 cents. It was only listed for 16 days and I made $17 and 10 cents. I find these at the bins every once in a while, the like toddler ones. I have really, really good success with them. You're going to see this week that although my sales might have been down, I didn't have quite as many and the items sold for a little bit low. I got rid of some old items that just should not exist in my inventory. And for that, I am counting as a success for this week. Very excited. The first one of those is this Life is Good Seize the Day Booth Bay Harbor Maine short sleeve gray t-shirt in a size extra large. I had heard that 
you know, life is good can do kind of well, I decided to grab it. This sold for $14. Thankfully, that was another 30% off offer that was accepted. I got this at the bins. It was only a dollar and four cents that week, but it sat around for 646 days. So that's basically two years, which is crazy. And I only made $7.99, but it's out of my inventory. I did still make $7.99 and I got my dollar investment back. Next to sell on Sunday was this Cabby Juliet Leopard Animal Print Puffer Vest Jacket in a women's size small. This sold for $24, also as a result of the 30% off sale. I got this at a Goodwill retail store. My average cost of goods was $5.49. I actually remember finding a few of these like puffer vests. I don't know if they were just donated by the same person because they were on the new racks together. And this I think is the last one to sell. I had a Vineyard Vines. I had an Oakley. Um, I'm trying to remember, I had a couple others. Those all sold a while ago. This one was the last of them to sell. Cabby always says hit and miss. Some pieces sell really well, some don't. Definitely look up the style number on the inner tag. Um, it's usually just a very short style number. And it's really easy to find stock photos as well as look up kind of the saturation on the market. I didn't do that for this piece and when I got home I realized that there were a lot of them available but it did eventually sell, but it was listed for 536 days for me to make $11.69. Definitely make sure to check those cabbie styles. I actually sold like a jacket blazer thing that was super, super cute, super good condition for like $50 a couple weeks ago. So that was a really great cabbie style. The last one on Poshmark was these Sanook Yoga Sandy Black Slip-On Sandals Flip Flops Comfort Shoes in Women's Size 7. I was starting to lose complete faith in Sanook. I had heard kind of good things. Not that it's going to sell for a lot, but that it can be a consistent seller. And I think I have like four things listed from Sanook in my like two-year reselling career. And none of them have sold. So I was very glad for one to have sold, even though it only sold for $17, but I got them at the bins for $1.63, and these ones were only listed for 22 days. Of the four, these were listed most recently, and they sold, and I made $9.95. For the bins, I am okay with a $10 return, especially because a lot of the things that I pick up that I know are going to sell less are going to be quick listers that I know will sell, so I was excited to see that this actually did sell. I had a terrible eBay week. I am just gonna say, I'm pretty sure that I was being punished in the eBay algorithm for not listing a lot of things the week prior. A lot of the days I was just doing relists and sell similar on Poshmark and eBay. So I was probably being punished, but it's probably well-deserved. So my one eBay sale was these Abeo Biosystem Loma black leather sandals, slip-on walking shoes and a women's eight. I sold these for $26. I also got those at the bins at the same time and day that I found those Sanook sandals. So it was fun to see them sell together. Not like together, but you know what I mean. On the same day. These ones also were $1.63 that day. They sat for 26 days and I made $22.55. So that is a really great flip. They sold quickly. They gave me over $20 return. So that's like the golden thing right there is sell under 30 days, $20 profit. That is always the goal. So to recap, I had six sales that first Sunday, five on Poshmark and one on eBay. The next day was Monday the 11th, and then I only had two, so you're gonna see these midweek sales, just barely had any. But I did have something every single day, which is always good, I didn't have any no sales days, so I'm thankful for that. The first thing were these Mountain Hardware Gray Beige Outdoor Cargo Hiking Shorts and a Men's Size Large. These sold for $22. That was just a 10% offer. I had them listed as $25. If you like something in my closet, you will shortly receive a 10% offer with discounted shipping. That is what this person accepted. These were that like grayish color that you never know what to put in your listing. So what I will always do is in the color, I will say gray, beige, kind of depending on lighting. Please see photos to try to keep, you know, keep them from claiming I... I posted the wrong color. Poshmark, I can choose two colors in the like clickables. eBay, I have to just choose one. They only let you list one color in the listing, but I'll still in the description say, hey, I think it's black or navy blue depending on the listing. Black, navy blue seems to be the hardest one, but gray and beige, sometimes I have trouble with also. But I got these at the bins. My average cost of goods that day was only 75 cents. I got a whole bunch of men's shorts these days and most all of them have sold, which have been fantastic. They were listed for 220 days. I think they were one of the last few pairs of shorts. Actually, there's another one later on, I think that also sold from that haul. Um, I do have that haul on my channel in one of my bins hauls. I 
probably won't be able to find which one, I apologize. But I have lots of Vins hauls on this channel if you are interested. I'll have some linked down below for sure. I ended up making $16.85. Those types of things are so easy to list, they're so easy to photograph that if I can grab them at the Vins, sell them for around $20, this one even more, it sold for $22, I'll be happy with that. The next on Poshmark was this Lucky Brand Modal Cotton Black Floral Three Quarter Length Sleeve Boho T-Shirt T-Shirt in a size large. This one sat for quite a while. I do like selling Lucky Brand. The smaller sizes do sit around for a little bit longer than the larger sizes I have found. I eventually accepted a $15 offer. I know I didn't have a lot into this one. Um, I got this at a Goodwill retail store. My average cost of goods was only $1.72. That is because I was actually in um, Virginia. The local Goodwill region near me does not run any kind of discounts, tag days, anything like that. But the region I was in in Virginia was running some sort of sale, so my average cost of goods was much lower. I would not have picked this up for the $5.19 that it is at my normal Goodwill. But to pay a couple dollars, I did pick it up, but it sat around for 458 days, so that is the drawback. However, I did make $10.28. Those lucky ones are so easy for me to list. I just copy and paste a different one update the photos and a couple keywords, and I am done. Okay, I had no eBay sales, so those were my only two sales for the day. Tuesday the 12th, I had two sales once again, but I had one on eBay and one on Poshmark. My Poshmark sale was this J. Jill Black White Paisley Print Cotton Blend Stretch Pants Women's 16. I was expecting these to do better. Um, I like selling J. Jill, but I have a lot of J. Jill pants listed that weren't selling, however, this sale kind of kicked off quite a few J Jail sales. That's probably coincidence, but you'll see I had more J Jail sales this week and I've had um, one today and one yesterday also that won't be in this video. These sold for $25. I believe that was an offer I accepted. I probably had them listed for 30. I doubt I had them listed higher than that. I got these at like a local honey hole thrift store near me that I love going to. If you've been watching my dollar day videos or my 50 cent day videos, that was the store. I will have the 50 cent video linked up above that I just most recently posted. I have so much fun. Oh, that is the store that I could have gone to today. And instead I am here with you guys filming and listing. So again, I usually don't like to commend myself and pat myself on the back, but I'm actually really proud. I told my husband, I was like, I can't believe I'm doing what I'm supposed to. Okay, anyway, that's not what you guys are here to listen to. I got this for a dollar on one of their dollar day sales. However, it was listed for 370 days, so a year it took to sell, but I made $16.78. The next one was beautiful. I loved this piece so much. This was a soft surroundings floral crush tunic top beaded embroidered boho shirt blouse in a size small. I do not typically pick up soft surroundings, especially blouses in a size small at Goodwill for full price. I just loved this one and I knew it would fit me so I wanted to wear it to work once and then I was gonna get listed and I knew based on the just substantiality and how pretty it was, it would sell. Even if I didn't make a lot of money off it, it was worth it to me. So I did pick this up. It sold for $20, that was an offer I accepted. I had had bad sales, I needed to tell the algorithms like, yes, I'm here, I'm in business, I'm open, please send me customers. So I accepted that eBay offer for $20. I got this at my local Goodwill retail. My average cost of goods was $5.67. It did sit for 151 days and I made $10.93, which I am really okay with. I do see in this listing, I will normally not put stock photos in the title photo of eBay. Um, if you saw in the screenshot, I did this time, which just means when I cross-listed it, I forgot to remove it. So that on me, I will often put it as the second photo. I have tried to figure out so many times the rules or not rules for stock photos, and there's a lot of mixed things. Maybe sometime I will do a video of my own personal thoughts, but that is not this video. However, I don't typically use it as my cover photo. Okay, on Wednesday the 13th, I only had one sale, but I am thankful that I had at least one sale, and it was this Eliza J overlay sheath dress, beige taupe long sleeve formal dress size 12. This was another one kind of like Sunuk that I had hard good things, but I have, quite a handful of Eliza J stuff listed and none of them have sold. So yay, I finally had an Eliza J sale. 
I'm feeling her out still. I definitely slowed down on picking her up, but I picked this one up recently because it was a great size. It was really, really beautiful. It wasn't that expensive. And this one sold for $30. I got this at the local Prime thrift store near me that I do like to shop at. I have a variety of videos from that one too. I most recently had a thrift with me that, I think one of my videos I picked this one up. It wasn't the most recent one though. My average cost of goods was $4.38. It was listed for 126 days and I made $19.63. So right at that $20 sweet spot that I love getting able to hit. Okay, Thursday the 14th picked up a little bit for me, at least on Poshmark, I had four sales. The first was this Eileen Fisher V-neck stretch, jersey knit, navy blue, long sleeve dress, size medium. I really like buying Eileen Fisher. I will still not like pay up like extraordinary amount, but I will pay Goodwill re retail prices for it. And I paid the dress price for this, which is around $8. I found two of these that day. One was a petite size and that one was in a what sold video a while back. It sold very quickly. I was very excited. I thought this one would also sell quickly. This one sat a little bit longer. I think I had it listed for like 45. This was one of those that I had like a really low offer and we countered back and forth. Usually that doesn't work. Usually I don't end up having a successful sale, but every once in a while I do. And this one we were able to agree on $30. My average cost of goods was $5.56. This was listed for 212 days and I made $18.44. The best things I have sold in Eileen Fisher are her um, really good material sweaters. I had a few sweaters that were like merino wool, things like that, that were very high end, they were high quality. And I sold a couple around like 50 to 75 in like a week, which was great. Next was this Torrid Curve Beige Push-Up Multi-Way Strapless Plus Size Bra 2020, and it was on a women's 46 double D. This one took way longer to sell than I thought. I had sold other Torrid bras successfully, and so when I found this one, I was really excited, but you're gonna see that it took a while to sell. So I had been slowly decreasing the price. I think I started at like 35, and then I put it at like 32, and then it was at 30. So when I got a $20 offer, I was like, yes, it was a larger item, so it was difficult to store. Accepted that $20 offer. I got this at that same prime thrift store. My average cost of goods was $3.54, but it sat for 498 days for me to make $12.46. Will I continue to pick up toward bras? Yes, probably at you know a low price point, which I did for this one. Um, I probably paid less than my average cost of goods that day, but I'm still gonna pick them up because I do think they sell. This one just sat around longer than I expected. All right, guys, I, this might be my winner there's another one that's been a while, but this was my winner for the week of how long it's been in my inventory. So this is a Solomon Actolite short sleeve athletic shirt, red, white, size medium. I might've gotten this on my like first ever like sourcing trip to Goodwill. And I had been hearing Solomon. I am kind of a fitness person, so I knew it was a good brand. Buy their shoes. I don't think you need to pay Goodwill price for this t-shirt. You clearly don't because of the numbers that I'm about to tell you. I got a $13 offer on this and I was so happy. I again yelled across, I was like, number 41 just sold. <laughs> Meaning on my listed inventory, my spreadsheet where I keep everything um, organized, this was number 41, which means it has been on that forever because that also has removed from year to year everything that's sold. So this was items that came into 2024 unsold or that I've added in 2024 and it was number 41. So that means it's really old. I got this at a Goodwill retail and yes guys, I had that I paid $6 for this. This was before I was even averaging my cost of goods. I paid $6. This was listed in my inventory for 808 days. I was also slowly reducing the price and I just wanted it gone. So guys, it took me, what, two and a half years, but I made $4.05. What can I buy with that? I don't even know if I can buy like a cheeseburger at McDonald's for $4.05. Do they even have a dollar menu? I don't go there very often. What can I buy for $4? Tell me if you had $4 and you could buy anything, let me know in the comments what you would buy. I would probably buy some like e.l.f. lip gloss or something. You could buy e.l.f. cosmetics for 
All right, next and last on Thursday the 14th was this JJ 100% linen embroidered beige tan blazer jacket button front cardigan and a size small. So another JJ sale and this sold for $31. I had it listed for 35. They got my 10% off offer and they took it. So that was fantastic. I got this at the bins for $1.63 on a recent bins trip I did to Columbus. I almost put this one back just cause it was a little bit outdated from a style perspective and it was definitely an older tag and it was a size small, which traditionally for me takes longer to sell than the larger sizes in J. Jill. But I was like, it's 100% linen. It is still a blazer. I love 100% linen. I love blazers. So trust my instincts. And I did. And I came home with it and it sold in 32 days for a good sales price for what I would consider for J. Jill. And I made $21.15. The only caveat, I this was last Thursday. The day I'm filling this, it is a Tuesday. I would have, I shipped next day, unless there's some weird reason I can't. So I would have shipped this on Friday and it has not yet started tracking. Depending on which post office I go, I will scan them in or have them scan in for me so it actually registers and I can stand there and make sure that it gets scanned in. But at a couple of the post offices I go to, they have a bin and they will make you put your stuff in that bin. Um, and I'm not about to start that fight because 99.9% .9 of the time it's fine. They'll scan all the packages later on in the day. This was one of those times, probably I don't remember, there's like three or four that depending on what I'm doing that day, I will go to as far as a post office. So it probably was one of the times I'd put it in the bin and all my other items started tracking except this one. So I'm really just hoping that it starts tracking soon. I don't know what Poshmark will say because technically Poshmark doesn't have proof that I shipped it because it didn't scan in. If it scans in and starts tracking, but then USPS loses it, Poshmark would refund the buyer, let me keep my money and just call it a loss themselves. I don't know what will happen. Have any of you ran across it where you know you shipped it, but USPS never, that's happened to me on eBay. I don't know if it's happened to me on Poshmark, so I'm not sure what they will do or what they will say. Fingers crossed, it just shows up, it gets delivered, most items do. I did message the buyer because I got the shipping reminder from Poshmark. I didn't even realize it hadn't shipped. So I, when I got the shipping reminder, I was like, what's going on? I checked the tracking and I realized what had happened. Um, but I messaged the buyer saying, hey, I did ship this out next day. It hasn't started tracking, you know, fingers crossed. I'll certainly keep an eye on it. So I didn't hear back from the buyer, but I will keep checking and hopefully it gets there. Okay, Friday the 19th, I have three sales, two on Poshmark and one on eBay. The first on Poshmark was this Calvin Klein Black Shrug Lightweight Ponte Knit, Ponte, Ponte Knit Cardigan Sweater Career Size Medium. I'm gonna keep saying it, I do really like selling Calvin Klein career wear, especially when I can get it at the right price point. And I did, um, I got this at a recent 50 cent sale at a local thrift store. I love that they had a couple of those recently. And so the, when this sold for $19, I was very happy about it. I had a very low investment into it, so I'm able to accept a $19 offer. I also had worn this to work, which is a plus. I love you know the sustainability of having that rotation in my closet and then listing it and then getting something else in and listing it. So this was that local store, 50 cents, and it was only listed for 36 days, and I made $14.70. I think these career pieces people just always need. They're staple in their wardrobe, so they're gonna sell. Next on Poshmark were these Columbia Regular Fit Dark Khaki Classic Hiking Outdoor Shorts Chino and a Men's 36. This was the other pair of shorts I said earlier with the Mountain Hardware shorts that I also got that day when I had like a whole stack of men's shorts. They're boring, but they sell. They don't sell for a ton, but they do sell. I pick up Columbia at a low enough cost when I know it's something that I can sell and make like a $10 to $15 profit on. So I got these at the bins. My average cost of goods was $1.63. They were only listed for 28 days and I made $10.37. Next on eBay was a great sale and it was these Nike Classic Cortez Forrest Gump sneakers, white red shoes, style number men's nine. I actually got these from like a local market, not Facebook marketplace, but a Facebook group where it's, you know, I'll give things away. People will post things for free and you know, it's a community, it's a free sell group. I don't know why it took me so long to explain that. So I apologize. I've, all of you know what I'm talking about. 
Anyway, I picked these up hoping they would fit my husband and he was gonna keep them for personal use, but they didn't end up working for him, so I did end up selling them. Um, we were a little disappointed because they were really nice, but I ended up selling them instead. I didn't really realize how much I was gonna list them for when I like commented for my husband and then realized like after I got them, I was like, oh, these are the Forest Gump shoes. These are, these are probably good. Um, so I looked them up and yeah, they, they did really well. I've been running a normal like 20% off sale in my eBay closet and they sold full price as part of that sale. So these sold for $119.19 which is great, especially considering I had $0 into them. Now these are going out for authenticity guarantee through eBay because they were that high dollar sale. I have no reason to think these are not authentic. I did my research as much as I could prior to listing them for that. Also knowing they were going through authenticity guarantee. So I really hope that there's no issues that they've already been shipped out via FedEx to the eBay hub that they go through that. I'm not expecting any issues, but hopefully that sale sticks and they fit and there's no issues. Anytime you have a sale that high, you're always a little bit worried like, what if they fail and they get sent back to me or what if the buyer gets them and they don't fit and they come back to me. But it is what it is, that's part of the name of the game here and we work through it. So these were only listed for 68 days and I made $103.96. So that was a huge chunk. Without that sale this week, I would have been even more upset. Um, that was a really, really good one and I needed it this week. All right, the last day was Saturday the 16th. My first sale were these Patagonia Men's Hydro Peak Volley Shorts, Teal Swim Trunks, Board Shorts in a size extra, extra large. These were so nice. I found these at a local Goodwill just on the rack, chilling there. I don't know if they were ever worn. I obviously just listed them as excellent pre-owned. I think I had them listed as 40 and I got a $25 offer. And I wanted to counter because I think they were worth more than that. But I was having low sales. I wanted to kickstart the algorithm to show them, yes, I need more sales. And... Before I countered, I went back and checked comps for Patagonia, you know, board shorts, drunks. Some were selling more, but there were a lot that were also selling less or right on par. So I was like, if I counter this and he doesn't accept it, I'm gonna be so upset I didn't just take it. That's kind of my threshold. That's my thought process that I go through when I decide to either accept, counter, or decline. So I accepted it. I'm glad with that decision. My average cost of goods at the Goodwill retail that day was $6.25. These were only listed for $55, and I only made $13.75, but I needed those $13 for my statistics this week. All right, next was a great sale. It was these Judy Blue Dad Jean Crossover Front crisscross Medium Wash Denim Jeans in a size 27. I know these were featured in a Thrift With Me video uh, a few weeks back. I got these, I'm sorry, these sold for $40. I had them listed for $45, and they accepted my 10% off offer with discounted shipping. These were super trendy because they were that like crossover style right at the waistband, so I thought they would do well, and they did. At that prime thrift store, average cost of goods was 581. These were only listed for 15 days, and I made $24.11. All right, next one is my other super, super long listed sale of the week, and it was this Victoria's Secret pink coral workout tank top shirt, t-shirt, T women's medium. There's so many keywords in there, guys, because I relist items, and as I was relisting this probably a million times since it's been listed, I kept like adding keywords because I realized I didn't start relisting probably until like a year into my reselling, you know, journey. And I don't even think I had the word like shirt, t shirt, t. I had it listed as like a pink workout tank or something like that. Like super bad keywords. It didn't even say like Victoria's Secret at the time. I was like, people are gonna think it's like the color pink. It was just bad. So when you're relisting things, check them. You might've been having a bad day. You might've forgot like a really important word, like jeans in your title. You'll wanna add that. So I had been adding a bunch of keywords, as you can see from the word vomit that was my title. This, I think I had listed at $18 and somebody accepted my 10% offer one day thrilled. So it sold for $16. I got this at that same prime thrift store a while back. I was not averaging my cost of goods at the time. So I put this down as $1.50, which means it was probably $3 and I got it at one of their 50% off sales that they usually um, run. 
So at least I didn't have a lot of money tied up into it for the last three years. But this sat for 790 days and I made $9.28. So I'm pretty proud of that $10. So those are my three Poshmark sales on Saturday and I also had three eBay sales. The first was this Zara white lace cottage core tie back long sleeve blouse top shirt women's large. I accepted a $10 offer. I knew this was my last day of the week and I needed sales, so I accepted it. It's Zara and I got it at the bins. My average cost of goods was a little bit high for that bins trip because I got a lot of heavy winter items. It was $2.14. This had been listed for 185 days and I made $6.32. This was super cute, Zara. Like I stand behind picking this up. I had it listed as cottage core. It was very coastal grandma, all those types of keywords. So I hope someone is, is really liking it. All right, next is, oh my gosh, I forgot. I have another one that's been listed forever. And it was this North Face A5 Series Men's Valley Cotton Twill Flannel Long Sleeve Medium. I don't know why this, well, I have suspicions, but this took forever to sell, which is atypical for most North Face things in, in my experience. But it sold, you know, outright for that 20% off sale I have running on eBay for $28.80. Actually, so, there was a watcher, so it was, listed for a price and then was on sale for 20% off of that price and then I sent 10% off of that and that was $28.80. I got it at a Goodwill retail store for $4 apparently. It was before I was averaging my cost of goods. It was listed for 759 days but I did end up making $19.95. I think I just had this listed obnoxiously too high at the very beginning and it took too long for me to start lowering the price. So now that I have a better understanding of market value and comps, I think I'm doing a little better in my pricing but that's probably why that one took so long. And then to round out the week, I had another J Gel sale and this was a J Gel Love Linen 100% Linen Striped Sleeveless Shift Dress Women's Small Petite. I accepted a $19 offer. This was another one that I considered countering because it is 100% linen. It is a very nice J Gel dress. But again, it's small and it's petite. Those are hard sizes to sell, especially in J Gel. And it had been listed for a really long time. So I was like, get over yourself. I knew I had paid about $8 for it. So I had to get over that mentally. I'm like, again, the market value, it does not matter what I paid for it. That's my problem. If I overpaid for it, that's my problem. It's not the buyer's problem. So I accepted the $19 offer. I had gotten it at a Goodwill retail store. The average cost of goods that day was $6.09. And it was listed for 510 days. And I made $10.52. I really wanted this to sell this coming spring and summer so it wasn't sitting around through winter again. So I'm happy to get it out of my closet. So, okay, let's wrap up my total numbers here for you guys. I had 24 sales. That is much lower. Just looking at, what did I have the last couple weeks? Do some real time number gathering for you guys. Just so you can kind of see a comparison. So the week prior, I had had 37 sales. So that's a lot different. Um, it's Tuesday right now. I've only had 10 sales, but I'm almost like halfway to what I had last week. I had 18 sales on Poshmark and six on eBay. I had, I think my last what sold video, it was like battle of eBay versus Poshmark because I think they tied or like they were, maybe e came, eBay came out right on top or something like that. Um, but yeah, eBay just slumped this week. Um, probably cause I hadn't been listing consistently. But I always think it's fun to see where I had sourced my items that sold. So I got 10 at a Goodwill retail store, seven from the bins, four at that prime thrift store, two at that local honey hole store, and one that I got for personal use, but it didn't work on a, a Facebook sharing group. My total sales were $670.74, and my total profit for the week ended up being $427.14. I was pretty disappointed in that. However, the gut check I had to give myself, I decided to go back and look at my 2023 spreadsheet from March. And with the except of one week that beat this by 10 cents, this $427 was still higher than every single week in March last year for me. Still kind of in the beginning of my reseller journey. I do this part-time. I have a full-time job, full-time kids, full-time husband, full-time life. So I need to be happy with that. Just because it wasn't over 500, I need to not be so hard on myself just because I've been used to being in that 500 to $1,000 range per week. It's, it's nonsense. I need to give myself a little bit of grace. 
So remember that again, also, as you guys are watching, if there's other part-time or full-time resellers watching this video and you're getting disappointed, give yourself some perspective, give yourself some grace. A lot of times, most of the time, it probably has nothing to do with you. It might. It, you might need to look at the quality of items you're getting. You might need to look at your pricing. You might need to look at your listing strategy. You might need to list more consistently. But sometimes there's things going on in the economy. There's holidays. There's other events that are driving traffic away from online marketplaces. And that is just part of this business. But okay, guys, I'll get off my soapbox. I hope that you found this either fun or entertaining. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you have not already. I already have a thrift with me slash haul filmed that I should have up in the next week or so. I have another um, Goodwill video coming, so keep an eye out for that one as well. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.